Welcome everyone to a simple video on the Northern Renaissance. Nothing is tricky, no Kardashians in this one. Um, so this is on the Northern Renaissance. This is unit two and it's video three. You'll see on the left there, um, that is Albrecht Durer's The Hair, which we'll see again later in the video from 1502. So I'm gonna go through a brief overview and once again, we'll dissect this more in class. So let's think about some things first. Why did the Renaissance begin in Italy? We discussed that with the last video. So remember, it was because of its location, which made it a center of trade, which made it meant money. Um, it's because it was surrounded by physical reminders of the past, which inspired them to do cool things. And also there was a lot of competition between city-states. So um, what was inspiration for the Renaissance we didn't get too much yet. We're gonna to get to this more again. So let's get a little preview here. Uh, the Italian city-states, they were inspired by classicism, which we've discussed, and also by humanism, which we're gonna to get to a little bit more. Now the Northern Renaissance, their inspirations had a little bit more to do with religion than the Italian Renaissance, even though we've seen plenty of statues and paintings that were religious themed. Um, the Northern Renaissance was about religious reform, returning to Christian values, revolting against the church authority. We're going to get to the Protestant Reformation soon, so you'll see some connections there. So how did the Renaissance spread to other parts of Europe? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One was warfare. For example, you had the Kingdom of France fighting with some of the Italian city-states. So the soldiers from France would go to Italy, notice the ideas and bring it back to them, and then it would spread through other parts of Europe. Also, you had artists that came from France or um, other parts of the Holy Roman Empire that would, like Albert Dorr, who would then go to the Italian city-states and bring stuff back with them, these ideas, right? Ideas travel, not just goods. Scholars did the same thing. The church also um, was based the Italian city-states. So people there, priests or whoever who went to seminary or to study or to visit um, Rome would bring back ideas as well. So it's not just from warfare. So let's look at Northern art a little bit. They had some of the characteristics or actually many of the characteristics that we discussed earlier. Realism, but also you see some naturalism, a lot more of nature in Northern Renaissance art. More of the work is done on wood, and they use more oil paints as opposed to maybe Italian frescoes. They had an interest in landscapes. We'll see some examples of that. They also didn't just worry about saints and aristocrats. There was also an emphasis on peasants and their middle-class lifestyle. As you see here, an etching, which literally means it's carved into wood um, by Peter Brugel the Elder. And this was uh, done in the mid 1500s in the Netherlands. Now, this is very late Renaissance. Some people would say this actually isn't even Renaissance, but this is a Vermeer. He was Dutch. And notice again some of the characteristics we've discussed. Notice how realism, how real it looks. Notice the light and shadowing. Notice the individualism. But how cool is it here that individualism is that ordinary people are important here too, such as a milkmaid, which is actually its title. We have Jan van Eyck, he was also Flemish. We'll talk more in class, like what, where is uh, Flanders, where Flemish people are from. A lot of his work uh, was had courtly aristocratic themes, so not everything was about peasants and the average person. Compare this a little bit to um, Raphael's painting from 1504. Sometimes you have to wonder, did the Italian Renaissance really spread north or did northern ideas spread south because sometimes it looks like it's a little bit of both if you see here notice the tiles on the floor and both of them the perspective notice the pillars and the columns so you see classicism in both you see um perspective in both here's another one from him 1437 this was part of um a series of three pieces that was to go behind an altar. But once again, you see the importance of geometric arrangement of figures. You see perspective. You see classicism with the columns. We have Roger van der Weyden. Um, he uh, did lots of paintings we'll see here. This, once again, shows individualism. It's a portrait of a woman with a winged bonnet. 
which was done in 1435, so pretty early Renaissance. Once again, you see light and shadowing and all those things that we already learned about. He also did this here, St. Luke drawing the Virgin. What characteristics do you see here? I'm not even going to tell you, but, but look there. Look at the floor. Look at um, the buildings. Look at where the focus is. What do you see? What does it look like what we've already seen before? So in France, there's also something known as the School of Fontainebleau, uh, the group of royal artists that decorated this royal palace and studied and created lots of artwork. They had two distinct periods, but overall it happened between the 1530s and 1560s. So here's an example of one of the pieces that was produced there, Diana the Huntress, which was made between 1550 and 1560. What characteristics do you see here? It might help if you know about Diana the Huntress, um, a goddess from Greek mythology. So right away, you know, there's classicism in this piece. You might find some other characteristics as well. Albert Dürer, uh, a German artist who we'll look at a lot, and it's sort of fun to compare him with da Vinci because he's often referred to as the da Vinci of the North. So like da Vinci, he was a Renaissance man. He was more than an artist. He was a scholar. Um, he did studied math. He was a military engineer. He painted lots of landscapes. He made lots of woodcuts because now that the printing press came about, woodcuts were almost like a wooden stamp so that your artwork could be reproduced in pamphlets and books as well. And he was alive between 1471 and 1528. Um, lots of his self-portraits. Here's one of them when he was a little bit younger. Notice what characteristics you see here. Geometric arrangement of figures, individualism, perspective, light and shadowing. I've had many students say he looks a bit like Jesus, and actually, in my old district, so did a custodian, and he didn't believe me when I said it's not Jesus, and he took the pieces down off the wall. Well, that's another story. Uh, little happy bunny I mentioned before. So you didn't really see this in Italian Renaissance art, right? Um, two more pieces of him. You probably recognize the one on the right. It's pretty popular. Both of these pieces were done in 1508. Now, England... Um, was part of the Northern Renaissance, a little bit different. You don't see much paintings from them. Um, you see a lot of architecture, such as Hardwick Hall here, which was built in the late 1500s. Notice the classicism with the columns. You see lots of uh, symmetry here. And of course, England's Renaissance period was also known for writing, because that's Shakespeare. So that's a whole other ballgame we'll get to later. Another example of English architecture, the Burley House. Um, they called this the Elizabethan era, but Queen Elizabeth, this was during the Renaissance, so that, that's why. And notice the domes. Um, we're going to learn more about Brunelleschi's dome in Italy. Now, this is nothing compared to that size, but domes were important for many reasons, but also because they were uh, considered to be the perfect shape and a tribute to God. And also you see the classicism with, um, look at the columns on the roof there as well. So I went through this pretty quickly. We're going to go through more examples in class once again. Don't forget to take notes uh, if it will benefit you, which it probably would. And don't forget to try to fill out your reflections as well. If you have any questions, uh, please get them ready for class or shoot me an email, and I will look forward to addressing them and talking about this fun topic. So good talk, guys.